Super Mario Odyssey is an amazing game that does so much right, and one of the best things that game did was introduce the capture mechanic. Instead of having a measly limited number of power-ups, this game gives us dozens of various abilities by allowing us to capture a ton of different enemies and objects. It's such a simple yet genius concept that leads to some of the most enjoyable experiences in the whole game. However, with that being said, not all captures are equal. Not every capture is going to be as fun or useful or memorable as others just because there's so many in the game. So today I'm going to be ranking all 52 captures in Super Mario Odyssey and try to determine which one is the greatest. Obviously my favorite capture will probably differ from yours, however I'm going to try and be a bit objective and considering several factors around each capture, other than just saying I like it or this one sucks. So keep that in mind and drop any of your reasoning why you think captures are too high or too low on this list on the comments down below. To start off our list, we have the boulder. This is an extremely simple capture where you turn into a boulder and slowly move a few feet to reveal some regional coins. It's definitely the most forgettable capture in the game, and when you pair that with its slow movement, it earns the spot as the worst capture on our list. Next we have the tree. You capture a tree and hop around a little bit to reveal a moon. Very similar to the boulder except you get a moon instead of regional coins, and I mean the hopping animation is more fun visually, but still not interesting at all. For number 50, we have the cactus. The cactus capture is functionally identical to the tree. You can take damage to it before you capture it, so I guess it's more of a challenge. And I like how the cactus's theming works with the Sand Kingdom, but yeah, it's not really much better. Number 49 is the Bowser statue. You capture a Bowser statue, move it a bit, and reveal a moon. Very original, I know, but I do think it's a cool aesthetic and neat reference considering Bowser statues have been a part of the Mario series since Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES. Next is meat, and you're definitely noticing a theme where at the bottom of this list it's just move the object simulator. However, what makes the meat capture interesting is that it has its entire own cutscene. You have to unthaw the meat too by bouncing around, which gets the attention of Cookatiel, triggering this awesome boss fight. The capture itself is not really fun to use, but it's pretty funny and it's attached to an actual boss fight instead of just one collectible, so it's more memorable than the other captures below it. Of all these movable object captures, the manhole is the one that makes the most sense in my opinion. I mean, it works extremely well with the city theme and also just feels like an object that should be attached to some sort of secret rather than just a random tree. Not to mention, it unlocks an entire sub area. Obviously, you're not going to spend a lot of time using the capture at all since you just slowly move it over, but as a concept, I think it's cool. Number 46 is the taxi, and before making this list, I would have thought the taxi would place much higher. Then I remembered you don't drive the taxi, you move the analog stick a little bit and it triggers a cutscene. Neat idea, but come on, capturing a taxi should have been so much cooler. Another movable object here, we have the letter. If you spell them all out to make Mario, you're rewarded with a moon, so it's a bit of a puzzle. There's not really much else to add here, I mean, it's cool if you know how to spell, but my dyslexia was never a big fan of this challenge. Up next is the puzzle part from the Lake Kingdom. You turn into this statue piece and have to line it up with the other counterpart to get a moon by navigating through this little puzzle. It's definitely not a bad capture if you consider how it's incorporated into the game, but by itself it's pretty simplistic. Especially considering you can only move around this set path of squares. I mean, the capture is literally just called puzzle part, so it's obviously not going to be the most exciting, but in the context of its puzzle, it actually works pretty well. And then, of course, we have the Metro Kingdom's puzzle part, and yes, the game considers these to be separate captures for some reason. It functions just like the other puzzle part, but I'll rank it a little bit higher because completing this puzzle will restore power to New Dong City, which is cool because it's integrated into the game's story missions. Number 42 is the mini rocket, and frankly, this one might be too high on the list, but I don't care. The game uses this capture a ton, but effectively they're just glorified warp pipes. All it does is trigger a little cutscene where it takes you to another area, and while you don't get to control it, you're still a freaking rocket. I don't know, for whatever reason, there's just something so satisfying about seeing this rocket take off to space. Even though it's arguably the most basic capture in the game, I don't care, it never gets old. Next we have the binoculars, that are pretty much just the binoculars from 3D Land as a capture. They're one of the simplest captures in the game, but it's also a great idea of how Nintendo was able to take ideas from past Mario games and change them enough to highlight Odyssey's mechanics. I especially love how the rockets shoot up, giving you a way better vantage point. I think my favorite part about the rocket is that you can just look off into the distance and capture all the hidden details in each kingdom. And what is that over there? A stat from our YouTube channel saying that only 7% of our viewers are subscribed? Hmm, interesting. For number 40, we have the zipper. The zipper is completely carried by the creativity of the fact that you're playing as a zipper. Like I had a, oh wait, I can do that moment while playing this game and capturing a zipper for the first time. It makes so much sense given the context of Odyssey's mechanics, but it's so outside the box weird that you gotta respect it. Unfortunately, all the zippers have set paths, so they definitely don't allow for much freedom. 
The spark pylon is often just used as a transitional capture to take you to another area, but there are several times where you can actually control the spark and travel on different paths, which is pretty fun, and naturally this is just one of the most iconic captures in the game, seeing as it's the last capture in the entire story, and one of your first captures in the game too as you take it to escape the Cap Kingdom. The Jizo is a reference to Mario's Tanuki suit that lets him turn into a statue. It has pretty slow movement, but is used in some dope puzzles because you can walk on spikes and activate certain P switches. For number 37, we have Picture Match Part Mario. This is basically just a minigame where you recreate Mario's face, and it ended up actually being put into Super Mario Party as the game making faces, which is pretty cool. The minigame itself is fun, but as a capture, eh, it's just kind of there. Same thing with Picture Match Part Goomba. It's only ranked higher because you can make a lot of funnier faces if you're intentionally messing up with the Goomba than you can with Mario. Number 35, the Fire Flower Plant. It's like the Fire Flower, but you're a piranha plant, which means you can breathe fire, which is awesome, but you're also completely stationary. Before you can even capture this thing, you have to throw a boulder into its mouth to prevent it from biting Cappy, which is definitely a nice touch though and makes this capture more interesting. The poison piranha plant is the fire piranha plant with poison, who could have guessed? However, this poison can stick to invisible paths, allowing you to do this interesting gimmick where you have to reveal the invisible paths with poison, so you obviously want to reveal a lot of it so you can see where the path is, but obviously you're revealing it with poison. So you gotta leave some spots invisible in order to actually walk and jump across it. I don't know, it's a simple mechanic, but in this context, it's super fun, so I think it's better than the fire piranha plant for that reason. Speaking of invisible platforms, the Moai is basically the king of these things. I love the idea that he's able to see invisible platforms with his shades, but because the capture can't jump, it's hard to rank it much higher. With Taifu, you can move around and blow away enemies and blocks to reveal hidden areas. There's really nothing wrong with this capture, it's kind of just exactly what you would expect, but on the same coin, it's not revolutionary. The Tropical Wiggler allows you to stretch out, making it easy to move from platform to platform. They're introduced in Lost Kingdom and you have to do this above Poison, which makes it pretty interesting, but it has some really goofy movement and is great at making you feel as though you're actually playing as a Wiggler, but in the same sense, it doesn't give you a ton of freedom. You're playing as a Wiggler. There's really only one action you can do in this entire capture. Number 30 is the Coin Coffer. It's another capture that might be ranked too high since all you do is walk around and spit out coins, but this one definitely gets extra points for its creativity. I mean, being able to capture an enemy that is essentially just a wallet and milk it for a ton of free coins just feels like some kind of exploit that you shouldn't even be able to do. The fact that the devs actually thought to put this in the game is sick, and hey, I'm never gonna turn down free coins. The Chain Chomp capture is very satisfying. Being able to use them as kind of a slingshot in order to break walls, it's just so fun to use. And because they're attached to the chain, you can only move them too far, which just naturally limits them to only a couple of different uses. But it's still a cool capture regardless. And because it's introduced so early into the game, it makes sense that it's a fairly simple capture. Next we have Big Chain Chomp. Yes, this is a different capture. It's a bigger chain chomp. It can be used to break more blocks. It's bigger, bigger is always better. So yes, I guess. Next we have Madame Brood's Chain Chomp. This takes the Chain Chomp mechanics and incorporates them into an actual boss battle by replacing the chain with a leash. It's genius how it takes the limitations of the Chain Chomp and perfectly transitions them into an important mechanic in this boss fight. The Paragoomba lets you fly by flapping the Goomba's wings, and this allows you to reach areas you wouldn't be able to usually. It controls exactly like how you would expect a Paragoomba to control, but it also doesn't provide much depth because all you can do is flap the wings. Para Bones controls just like the Para Goomba, but Dry Bones is just cooler than a Goomba, so this one takes the cake. Number 24 is a Goomba. All they can do is walk and perform little hops, but they also don't lose traction when walking on ice and can stack on top of each other. Several of the moons in this game can be created by earning a large Goomba stack and then approaching Goombet, which is one of the most unique sort of puzzles in this game. It's kind of funny how Nintendo decided to make people capture the actual human who controls the RC car instead of just capturing the RC car itself. The RC car's controls can be kind of frustrating, but they're also true to an actual RC car, so I mean, I guess it makes sense. Number 22 is the Lava Bubble. This one works really well in the Luncheon Kingdom since it gives you the ability to traverse across lava throughout the level, and you can also jump around and take these cannons which shoot you to the entire other region of the map. While there's a lot to do with this capture, it only works in lava, making it a bit more niche, but it's super fun in the boss fight. The Sherm is a tank that basically turns Mario into a third-person shooter. It is a tank, meaning its controls are simple. You move, aim, and shoot. But regardless, it has some really cool uses in the game, especially in the Mecha Wiggler boss fight. 
At first glance, it might not seem too interesting, but capturing Lakitu in this game, for some reason, is essentially just a fishing minigame disguised as a capture. I am a sucker for fishing minigames in any video game ever, so I think this is sick. This is easily also one of the funniest and most creative captures in the game because of that. I mean, Lakitu's just always fishing. Shavarian Racer. Originally, I was not a big fan of this capture. I thought the controls were just absolutely absurd, but I've come to appreciate its goofiness. It can definitely still be frustrating, but it's incredibly creative, and the idea of bouncing around as a Shavarian is really funny. Having multiple entire Shavarian race courses built around this capture, including online leaderboards, definitely make it more memorable overall. Charge and Chuck lets you run while charging. This allows you to burst through rocks and other tough objects. It's a lot like a Goron from the Zelda series, but you're able to turn and move from left to right, giving you a bit more freedom and just making it very satisfying as you break through objects with ease. The frog allows you to jump really high, and that makes for some really fun platforming sections like when you have to carefully time jumps over these poisonous waves, but besides that, I mean, it's just a frog. They don't do much. They just kind of jump up really high. I'm ranking it this high up though because I have a soft spot for it. This was all of our first experience with the capture mechanic, and as a tutorial, it does an excellent job. The cheap cheap feels like it shouldn't do much, but it actually has a bunch of uses. First of all, it obviously lets you swim faster because you're a fish now, and you also don't have to go up for air. On top of that, the cheap cheap gets a satisfying spin attack that you can use to take out enemies. Honestly, my favorite part about this capture is that you can take it out of water, and you just kind of bounce around sadly for a couple of seconds, just like an actual cheap cheap. I just find that really funny. Cheap Cheap Snow Kingdom. This is exactly the same as a regular cheap cheap, but it's purple. It also doesn't take any damage from icy water, so it's slightly better. Glidon lets you soar across the air as a flying lizard. What else do I need to say? I mean, the soaring mechanic is so satisfying and it feels really natural. You also get a lot of great views of the kingdoms you're using it in. Odyssey has a lot of really beautiful landscapes, and I'm glad that Glidon is a frequent capture because you can experience awesome flyovers throughout Odyssey's many different kingdoms. All the pole does is fling Mario. Theoretically, this capture should suck, but it's one of the most satisfying movements in this entire game. Being able to flick Mario around with ease, it feels so fluid and really just demonstrates how perfect Odyssey's movement overall is. Sometimes just jumping and running around New Donk City can be a blast in itself, and these always add to the experience, because you capture them and then boom, you're already out going super fast. Volbanon are the forks that are introduced in Luncheon Kingdom, and it's just the exact same thing as the poles. However, because they're forks, they can stick off the side of structures or mountains or whatever, which makes them way more versatile, as this allows you to gain quick height. For number 11, we have Knuckleotech's Fist. These are only used in the Knuckleotech boss fight in Sand Kingdom, but it's also an essential part of that boss fight. Being able to use the boss's primary attack back against him is super genius, and it continues Odyssey's awesome game design trend of introducing a capture and then making that capture the main gimmick of that kingdom's boss. We see this with the Lava Bubble capture in Luncheon, the Chain Chomp in Cascade, and so many more times. This is essentially just the Bullet Bill, which is arguably Sand Kingdom's main capture, and it's implemented so well into this boss fight. The T-Rex capture is heavily boosted by the fact that you turn into a T-Rex. That is awesome! Theoretically, this is just a glorified Mega Mushroom, which I never really enjoyed too much in the other games it appeared in, like 3D World. But at the end of the day, you're not Big Mario, you're a dinosaur. It's so cool, it's technically the first capture Nintendo ever showed off in their E3 2017 trailer for this game. If you don't think this is cool, you're, you're weird. You get to play as a dinosaur, I don't care. The uproot really only lets you stretch and do a little short hop afterwards. But what makes it ranked this high is just the amount of uses it has in Mario Odyssey. It feels like the developers were really flexing their creative muscles with this one, as you can use it to reach high up areas, perform difficult platforming maneuvers, breaking blocks to reveal secrets, and it even gets its own dedicated boss fight. The uproot is incorporated into the game in so many unique ways, and it's also just super satisfying to use, not to mention the popping noises it makes. That's the icing on the cake. Of all the flying related captures, the bullet bill has to be the best. Not only can you fly, but you also travel at insanely fast speeds and break blocks that you collide with. Boosting and then also shaking the controller to zoom feels perfectly smooth. I mean, the only downside here is because the bullet bill will eventually explode, so you can't just go anywhere, but this adds a bit of challenge because you have to find the fastest path and you're encouraged to travel at Mach 10. The Bonsai Bill capture is just a more powerful bullet bill. I mean, it's larger and it's able to take out more blocks because of that. It's also nearly invincible. Only solid walls can take this thing down before it inevitably explodes on its own. 
Since the first Super Mario Bros. game, Hammer Bros. have been one of the most intricate enemies in the Mario series. Rather than simply walking up to you, the Hammer Bros. have an actual moveset. They can jump onto platforms, move around, and throw hammers. I have lost many lives in 2D Mario to Hammer Bros. over the years, and now being able to play as one of these characters is insanely cool. The moveset you get is also very true to the character. Of course you can throw hammers, but you also perform little hops just like a Hammer Bro does while walking. This makes for a unique platforming experience where you control completely differently than Mario, and Pair that with an actual jump that can propel you pretty high in the air, and you just have a sick capture overall. Fire Bro is a fire variant of a Hammer Bro, and obviously it plays similarly, but I think the fire throwing is way more satisfying. You can spam these fireballs and they skip across surfaces and are a lot easier for taking out enemies. It also has some interesting uses for certain puzzles where you have to light torches, and considering everything, I just think it's slightly better than the Hammer Bro. The Gushin allows you to shoot out water, which can be used to travel at a rapid pace, both horizontally and vertically. It's a bit like the rocket nozzle from Super Mario Sunshine, but with a lot less restrictions, and it's super fun to use. The main downside is, just like with the rocket nozzle in Flood, you have to recharge it by landing in water, but this makes for an interesting challenge, where you basically have to know exactly how much water you'll need before recharging. This is shown no better than in this capture's very own boss fight where you fight against, oh brother, mo mollusk, la mollusk Lancer? Mollusk Lancer? This frickin' thing. You you gotta basically spray yourself upwards, hit his head, and then kill Octopus Man. I, I'm just gonna call him that. I, I don't, I have no idea how to pronounce that. The way this boss fight perfectly incorporates the capture, it definitely makes it a lot more memorable, and that's one of the reasons it's ranked so highly. Yoshi is one of the greatest surprise captures in Mario Odyssey, and I'd say seeing Yoshi on the top of Peach's castle is one of the greatest like Easter egg reference throwback things in any Mario game ever. In Super Mario 64 though, you couldn't even ride him. Now you can straight up become him, which is insane. You get the typical Yoshi moveset, I mean you can eat enemies with your tongue and flutter jump, but there's a few new mechanics to this as well, such as climbing walls by sticking to them with the tongue. Everything from his unique moveset that makes platforming with him super fun, to the incredibly nostalgic and downright beautiful way they finally reveal playing as Yoshi to the player, he is well deserving to rank this highly. The Pokio is perhaps the sickest capture in Super Mario Odyssey. Not only is the Beak's quick stabbing animation incredibly satisfying when you're taking out enemies, but the Pokio completely changes how you platform in this game. It takes the flicking mechanic from the poles in New Donk, allowing you to use them on any non-metal wall. I've already mentioned how satisfying the pole and fork captures are, which are essentially the same thing, but this is what happens when you take one of those captures and absolutely run wild with it. The amount of freedom they give you here is insane, and you just get an insanely cool capture as a result. It's also used in some very difficult platforming sections and its own boss fight. Even though it only shows up late in the game, I have zero problem giving this awesome little bird the number two spot on this list. And then number one, the greatest capture in all of Odyssey, it's Bowser. Now of course, Bowser comes with an awesome moveset, including his abilities to break walls with his scratches, breathe fire, and he can even slightly triple jump, which is so funny. However, what I think makes Bowser the best capture in Odyssey is the context of which you play as him. As the game comes to an end, you have one final mission, to escape a collapsing Honeyloon Ridge. With seemingly no way out, the solution becomes obvious. After traversing several kingdoms, capturing dozens of enemies, the game finally invites you to play as the King Koopa himself. There's even this awesome cutscene as you capture him for the first time, featuring gameplay of Bowser from tons of various games. Maybe Bowser isn't the most fun capture, or the most unique capture, or the strongest capture, but rescuing Princess Peach while scratching and clawing your way to salvation, not to mention doing so as the most iconic villain in gaming, it's just such a memorable moment and a perfect conclusion to such a memorable game. Of all the captures on this list, this one just feels the most special, and because of that, I have to give it the number one spot. But with that out of the way, let me know if you agree with this down in the comments below. Additionally, this video on screen right now is all about what would happen if we put the Wonder Flower in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever made, so go check it out.